Welcome to this episode of Gadget. Today we're going to fix this frigid air dryer. It's an electric dryer, not a gas dryer. So, I usually don't fix dryers. I don't fix them for people because of the cost. Now, here in Pennsylvania, you can buy one of these fully installed, delivered and installed for $450. Now, normal labor is usually around eighty to a hundred dollars an hour plus parts and then they rock you on parts um, so we're gonna teach you how to repair your dryer get it up and running closest to new as you can get it and we're gonna probably do it for like twenty or forty bucks so this video here is part one we're gonna diagnose this and see what's going on what parts that we need to order then I'm gonna show you how to purchase your parts not a lot of people know how to do that. It's really, really simple. So let's get started. Yeah, let's light this up. All right, enough of that. Let's get something done. You're wasting my paint. Okay, so the homeowner is complaining. It's not drying clothes. It's not working. All right, that's what they all say. But I got a little bit of backstory, okay? It was squeaking really loud before it stopped actually fully functioning. So let's take a look at this. I don't want to turn anything on yet, but we're going to take a look, see what's going on here. All right, well, I see problem one already here. You can see the lint catcher isn't even sitting all the way down. All right, that's a, that, that's a minor problem. Minor problem, could be fixed. It has a little bit of lint on it. So it's probably not catching it. So I'm assuming this is gonna be all clogged up. We've got a lot of lint here around the doorway. That's not good. So let's see what we can do here. Let's see if the basics function, all right? All I wanted to see is heat work. After that, we can fix anything. I don't really, really like to touch the heating element in here. But, of course you can hear the homeowner upstairs. All right. Uh, let's get down to checking this. Word of caution. We're going to turn it on with the door open. So, this is a safety device right here. It means door's closed. We can operate so we're going to check things what i'm going to look for is to see if this heating element is actually working so we're going to we're going to turn it on medium heat all right then we're going to turn it on to just normal all right we're going to push the button and turn it on it seems to be spinning okay Seeing the heating elements actually starting to glow. So let's stop right there. All right, we got the heating elements actually working. That's a good sign. Because I don't want to fix them. Now, why is it not drying? Is it just because the lint's all backed up? That's a possibility. Let's put let's put a load on it. So over here in the washer, I got me some towels and stuff all nice and wet just got washed so we're just gonna stick them in there yeah looks like a basic load so we're gonna try this again but we're gonna leave the door open just wash your stuff it's gonna come flying out you just want to hold your hand in front of it so I'm gonna push the button again turn it on oh look it's not even turning oh yeah, let's turn that off before we burn something out. So that's not a good sign. Let's take the squeaking into consideration. So it's not taking a normal load. It's here. We got one towel. The half a towel, like a little hand towel. One full towel, another towel, and a bed sheet. And a sock. Something else. So that's a normal load. And it ain't spinning, so we got a little bit of investigation to do. 
Okay, so our next step is going to be removing all of this. Now it's free spinning. I'm going to turn it back on. Okay, so now we're going to check out what the airflow is actually like to see how much cleaning we have to do. So, so far, it's not spinning under load, which won't dry your clothes, but it does spin. That's a good sign. So at least your motors are working and it's only one motor in here. So let's see what the flow is like on your air. Okay, so we're going to use a six in one tool here. They're free at Harbor Freight. Coupon. There's always a coupon. So we're going to take off the big end. It's going to be a 5 16 nut driver type deal. Loosen up the hose clamp and pull this off. Looks pretty clean in here. Looks pretty clean. Not too bad. Just some dust. And I got the door shut. We're going to turn it on again. Look at all the dust blowing out. Now we got dust everywhere. It's not too bad. Not too bad. So I don't think it's really to the flow port. It's still flowing dust everywhere. Now I got dust everywhere. Turn her off. We looked out the hole outside. Looks pretty clean. And we're gonna put this back on. Dust everywhere. Ah, oh, it's a lint. So what's the diagnosis here? Well, this thing's ran on a bearing. One big bearing. And it's on the back of the drum. So I already have the parts here. And I'm going to show you how it actually operates. And these are the parts we're going to go find on the internet in a little bit here. Alright, so this portion here actually mounts to the back of the drum that holds all your clothes. Okay, and they call it a bearing. Now when this starts wearing out, it'll start squeaking, but mostly this wears out. This is the carrier. What it does is the back of the drum will lock into place. All right, and that little nylon in there is actually your bearing itself. You put grease in there, don't worry. But the, it spins and rotates right in there. So what's actually going on here? Let's get a close up on this part here. See how there's a quarter inch difference between where the metal's at and where the plastic's at? Well, when this plastic actually starts to wear away, it'll drop all the way down to this metal and start grinding on it and actually making squeaking sounds. And then your belt tension's no more. So your belt tension will actually loosen and it will hit a stop and now your belt's just spinning around on your drum loose so that was pretty simple let's go get some parts I'll show you how to get some parts this is the easiest thing in the world it's probably actually dirt cheap I carry these parts I don't know it's a common part so first before we go hit a computer what we want to do is find the serial number. Serial number is going to determine everything. Usually it's right here or it's sometime inside the door here, but in this case it is right here. So we're going to write down that serial number. This is model number. Well, we don't want the serial number. We want the model number. My bad. Sometimes the serial number does help in this aspect if they made an off year. So you do want to write down the serial number if they specify what the last three digits is. But the main thing is the model number. So we got a GLER341AS2. So we're going to write that down and go upstairs to the computer. 
Okay, we are back here at the home office. Um, so we're going to find the parts that we gathered that are bad, which is the relatively only parts you really want to change out on a dryer. Um, you could always change motors and stuff, but again, the cost. Got to weigh the cost. $450 installed. Brand spanking new. Delivered and everything. Or your repair bill. And this dryer, most dryers are like 10, 15 years old. We don't want to go past $250 because you might as well buy a new one for 200 bucks more. They install it and everything. You got to also, if you're not really doing all the labor and you're paying somebody else, so if you're paying somebody else and they're spending X amount of dollars on parts and two hours of labor of changing out all the parts and cleaning out the whole dryer, then it's beneficial just to go buy a new dryer. That's what everyone does here in Pennsylvania because the cost of per hour for a repair guy to actually make a reasonable wage is somewhere around $80 to $100 an hour. Um, now I did do some calling around for fun and they don't have any good prices. Um, Really, yeah, I called the one place, just for fun, and it was, oh, well, we can't take your opinion on what's broken. We have to actually diagnose it ourselves at $85, and then that $85 will go towards the repair bill if you decide on doing the repair. If you don't want to do the repair because of the estimate, then you still owe us $85. There was another company that just said flat out, go buy a new dryer. Okay, that, 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 to me that's an honest company um, because if they come out and spend two hours, I would say, just say $100 an hour, that's tax and everything, you're already at $200 just to install all the parts, then, you know, to get the parts, it, it might be $20, it might be $40 for us to find the parts, but they won't install them. They have to use their parts, and their parts always cost usually double the price of the internet, but... I, I wish I can go down to the store and actually go buy the parts, but stores don't exist on buying the parts because they're just going to say, all right, well, we're going to order it, and it's going to be here in three to five business days. So I'm going to show you how to actually correctly find your parts. You're going to get a full schematic, and then we're going to cut out and go to part two. So you're going to want to find a video over here in Social Studios. And you're going to find part two and click it. Hey, you got to always stop and hit the subscribe button because this is what pays for these repairs for other people. Um, by hitting the subscribe button, I make a couple dollars and I repair things for free and go on my little way. I can't be a repair guy by charging the bejeebas out of people. I just feel bad. I really do. It's like if someone called me to do a dryer... You know, and I end up spending 50 bucks on parts, my labor, it's $250. Now, I can't guarantee how long it's going to last, but usually it's pretty good. But, you know, I, I usually tell them to just go buy a new dryer because at the 450 you could probably get them cheaper. Um, but at 450 that's a reasonable deal for a dryer for 10 to 15 years. It's... It's very <laughs> low cost, if you want to call it, because you got to factor in, you know, $450 and you get 10 years out of the dryer. No problems. It's all nice and clean. <laughs> it got a new state-of-the-art LED light in there. I don't, I don't know. Me, I rather repair them. But some people can't afford it, and this is what the video is for, is, you know, I want to save a couple dollars. I'm going to save you a buttload of money here. So let's get over to the screenshot here okay so now we got me picture on picture here what you want to do is that model number that I told you to write down and the serial number okay just in case you need the serial number most of the times you don't so we're gonna type it in oh my G don't want to work today there it goes G L E R 3 
And look, it's already starting to come up. We're just going to finish it. 4, 1, A, S, 2. All right, so you can you can hit belt parts, blah, 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 blah. I, I, I just I hit the search of that. Now, there is always a website somewhere that has the full schematics. So, parts for it. We'll try here. Appliance Parts Pros. Let's see if they got a schematic. There it is. So, they got a full schematic of this dryer right here. This is the model number. They're not asking for no serial number, so I'm assuming there's no mid-year change of anything. Um, so, we can actually pull things up. Uh, let's pull up this section here. It's called Drum Parts. So, they're showing you, let me zoom in a little more and try to bring it up over here. They're showing you the drum part, the metal bracket that holds it up, the plastic nylon bearing, they call it. There's a little bearing behind it, and then there's a pressure plate back here that pushes on the bearing. Seems simple. You can always print it out, because the next video, I'm not printing it out. I'm just going to show you how to do it. But you can always print it out for your reference. Let's go down here and find some of the parts. Now, now I ain't ordering it from these guys. Trust me. We're going to make it a heck of a lot cheaper. So we're going to scroll around. Look at the parts. We want to find. Here's a rear drum support shaft. And that's their part number. Okay. They, they usually have a kit. It's usually a kit. There it is, there it is, rear drum kit. So let's click on it. They actually sell for relatively cheap here. That it, that's, that's pretty cheap right there, $11.98. Now, since I don't really deal with this company, uh, I, I got Amazon, trust me. It's, it's so much easier to do Amazon. They actually give you a, a little repair video. Hey, you might want to watch that instead of mine. You might want to watch both. Better confidence, right? So they got the whole parts diagram that you can print out. But what I do is I usually write down the actual part numbers. So over here, they're showing you, see in quotations is their part number. So see this 530328115 That number you want to write down. That's a very important number. Now, the belt is good on here, but we have it taken apart. Replace the belt if it's cheap. Let's check what the belt is. We'll just type in belt. Oops. We'll type in belt and see if it's in my part finder. Let's, let's search it. Well, that ain't good. So they actually mixed up everything and went to town. I don't know why. It was in a fine parts. But let's go back one more. We have the part number for that. Okay. Go all the way up here. Search within this model. Now we're talking belt. Search. There is the belt, dryer belt. It's 87 inches long, 87 three quarter inches long, and the width is quarter inch. So we're gonna write down this manufacturing part number right there. I wanna write that down. So I got it all written down right here. Now here's where you get things a little bit cheaper. So we're talking, they're at, what is it, like uh, 20 some dollars. You can get the belt. They're saying the belt's 1106. Mm. So what I normally do, since I got an Amazon account, and uh, you know you got to use it, we're gonna go to Amazon. And I typed in some dumb stuff that didn't even get me to Amazon, but it's all right. Now we're at Amazon. That drum kit part number, the manufacturing part number, that's what we want to type in here. So we're going to do the 530 32 
eight one one five three. Look at all the selections it gives us up here. Look at all that. And I see a kit right here, right off the bat. Some people have heating element problems. I don't typically touch the heating elements because it's a fire hazard. I don't want to be responsible for it, you know. And is it really the problem? Is it one of these the high, low limit switches that if it gets too hot, it's going to burn out? It's actually they call it a. Some people call it a fuse. It's 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 a thermal fuse. It shuts off when it, the elements get too hot. All right, and there could be a problem with that. Um, but if you don't have the proper airflow, it's going to trip that. So if you didn't fully clean out the whole entire machine, it's going to still keep tripping that over and over and over. But we know the heating element works on this machine. I typically don't like to play with heater elements. Um, so we're going to leave it at that. I'm liking this kit right here. $19.99. So let's double check everything. The part number. The belt number. Alright, and it's compatible with Kenmore and many others. There's actually a whole bunch of other model numbers that this thing can actually go to. It's a universal kit. You know, it's a lot of the dryers are actually identical. They just have different names on them. Don't tell the manufacturer I told you. Um, so for $19.99, free shipping. Bang. So for twenty dollars, we're going to fix this machine. Right, so that concludes part one on how to diagnose your machine. Let's get it up and running. So click over to part two, and we'll actually disassemble and install these new parts and get it up and running. So thanks for joining us. Don't forget to hit subscribe button because it pays for all of this. And if it saved you a bunch of money, just hit the subscribe button. Ignore me. You know it. It's not hard. Uh, share it on Facebook. I got a Facebook. Come like me on Facebook. It's Randy Stern on Facebook. It's not hard. So please support your little local repair guy that's trying to save you tons of money. And in this case, we're going to end up saving $430 doing it yourself. So go click on my other video. Hope to see you there.